Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines we got for you today. XRP, the sleeping giant. And will we see legislation pushed back in the United States till 2025? Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Man, do I love the smell of crypto in the morning. You're damn right. Afternoon, evening, no matter where you are. I hope everybody's doing well. Right now, cryptocurrency market cap, $1.23 trillion. Market's up 3.1%. Yeah, we're not setting the world on fire, but I tell you what, we're going to talk about something today. Oh, yes, we are. Don't you go anywhere. 29800 plus for Bitcoin, 1800 plus for Ethereum. Tether right here at $83.4 billion, billion plus. XRP, 63 cents. We're up 3.6 in the last 24 hour here. Everything seems to be following Bitcoin today. We're off by 8% on the seven day. Let's get into this. Before we get started, listen, uh, tomorrow evening is our private weekly live stream. I want to invite all of you to come join us in the Digital Perspectives Mastermind Group because I know your life's busy. Markets are going crazy all around us. We've got all the tools you need to hip up your financial literacy. Don't treat your investments like a lotto winner. 75% of all lotto winners go broke with inside of three years. And I tell you something. This group is truly a mastermind group. There are brilliant people in this group with extreme knowledge in many, many areas, and we're all working together to help elevate one another and fill the gaps. Make sure you click the link, take advantage of the three-day free trial, and join us for tomorrow night's live stream. Here we go. Binance holds 2.8 billion XRP. Come on in right here. Yeah. Now, that's how you do it. That's a, that's a lot of chicken, you know what I mean, as they say. Look, I just wanted you to know the number. I saw the number and was staggered by it, but I'm going to tell you something. Here's another number. Uphold has over a billion XRP. So if you want to know where three plus almost four billion of it is, it's right there between those two exchanges. And then we see this. It's the one and only. It's the metal all man. Shout out to attorney, attorney James Murphy here. As expected, he's talking about the SEC versus Coinbase case. And remember, there was a motion filed by Coinbase to dismiss. <laughs> You're going to like this one. You're going to like this one. The SEC has until October 3rd to come up with its explanation for why Gary didn't really mean it. <laughs> Listen to what Gary says in this quick clip here. And just to preface this... Uh, He's gotten a clip here, uh, Metal Lawman has, that's got Gary saying it out of his own mouth that the SEC has no jurisdiction over exchanges. <laughs> Take a listen. I do think that working with Congress, and I think it's only Congress that could really address it, it'd be good to consider if, if it was, uh, if, if you would ask my thoughts, to consider whether to bring greater investor protection to the crypto exchanges. And I think if that were to be the case, because right now the, the exchanges trading in these crypto assets do not have a regulatory framework, uh, either at the SEC or our sister agency, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. That there you have it. From Gary Gensler himself, they do not have a regulatory framework from neither the CFTC or the SEC right now, but yet he finds himself suing exchanges and handing out lawsuits like Tic Tacs. All right. Let's talk about this for a second. Okay. Let's, let's talk about this. We're going to build off of the legal ruling now, and we are going to speculation mountain. That's where we're going. Yeah. And I'm asking, I'm inviting you to come along with me here. Cause I think that there's much bigger things about to be at play. XRP is the first coin to defeat the SEC and gain legal clarity in the United States of America. Fact, not fiction. It's also the first project to become partners with mega banks. Facts, not fiction. 
Supporters have shown patience for six years and believe one more shakeout could precede a significant awakening. And that may happen, I don't know. But what I do want to focus on for a second is the understanding that it is a fact that the XRP ruling absolutely says that XRP in and of itself is not a security. Major. And we know that they have major partnerships with mega banks and central banks around the world. And here's just a few to talk about some ties here that I want to speculate and build on this conversation for today in this video. And you'll hear why. BNY Mellon, a Ripple partner. Tim Keeney, formerly of BNY Mellon, responsible for 25% of global institutional assets, sits on the board at PolySign. PolySign could become a great acquisition or bolt-on company for BNY Mellon to serve as a digital asset custodian. Ripple joins ISDA for derivative settlement. Now think of this for a moment. ISDA is the International Swaps and Derivatives Association. That's directly for settlement. Over a thousand institutions in that particular association. Well, Ripple's not there to serve punch, right? Ripple's there because they have a role to play. Just for the same reason that I'm not in ISDA. Because I don't have anything to offer ISDA, right? It's the, way, that's the way, it's the way business works, right? So there you have it. Now stay with me. So that's clearing and settlement. We know ISDA... Collectively, the people in the companies and institutions in that organization and association settle more than a quadrillion dollars in derivatives. That's what Ripple's doing there. Now let's couple it back on the other side of the fence. Think about what is happening right now while we've just received clarity in the United States. Think about India, a BRICS member. The BRICS coalition, which we all know is expanding very quickly, they certainly have plans and intend to introduce their own currency as a coalition and to continue to de-dollarize from the U.S. dollar. Think of it for a moment. There is a real use case in the Ripple private ledger for central banks and CBDCs alike and other things like settling derivatives and that as well as well as cross-border payments, there is a role revealing itself here that felt much further off in June than it feels today. I have a feeling that things are going to continue to escalate like this as we continue to move forward because I believe that what we're waiting on now is for the globe and the industry the financial industry, to really understand and interpret the ruling that's come down from Judge Torres and all of the implications for it. Now, very quickly, before we go back to that conversation, I want to play this from today's Uphold uh, Spaces with John Deaton. Shout out to Simon Glaufflin and Dr. Martin Heisboy. Yeah, listen to this right here from John Deaton. As you see, the Republicans, uh, um, uh, candidates ramping up, we're going into an election year, and I just, it's going to be very difficult to imagine a bill passing the House and the Senate and signed by President, Bush, uh, President uh, Biden uh, before uh, 2025. And so I think there's a lot of work that's going to get done until then but I'm still negative that we're going to actually see a law passed into mm -hmm. law, uh, unfortunately. And there you go. So John Deaton C in 2025, you know, broadly for crypto uh, legislation, I think it's another couple years as well. I agree with John. Shout out to John Deaton. And sorry, I wasn't able to attend that earlier today. I got caught up in a meeting, but it, all good. We'll see you soon. Nevertheless, what I want to say is, is this. We're faced with the understanding that we may be looking at two years, 
Remember the flywheel set in motion released by Ripple 2019? They were talking about the virtuous effect, the virtuous cycle, right? The flywheel effect. Priming a pump. Whether we're talking about between two banks and remittance companies, however you want to look at it, let's now look at the flywheel effect from more of a macro level than just the inside of the workings of priming the pump uh, between market makers, right? Let's pull it back. Let's think of this, right? Let's think of this flywheel effect that they illustrate here. Let's think of it a little differently. So instead of just how it's priming the pump for transactions here, this is a diagram I did last year. Look at what we have here. But we have legal clarity now. XRP is not a security. What I believe is happening is we have this gap of time that is taking place right now. And if legislation is not brought on, put through, and passed, and signed into law, we're going to have a two-year period where it is going to take the global industry, or they will not take that long, I hope, but at least in that interim, it will become a reality that sets in as a driving fact that the only digital asset with clarity is XRP. And if no one does anything else, Congress doesn't act until 25, that's the way it's going to be. Where do you think the money's going to go looking for the best for places to be with it, where it's safe? I'm going to go to the one place I know I've got legal clarity. Here's another point while we're talking here. I, I mentioned it briefly earlier this morning's video, and I want to go over it here and share it here. When Judge Torres came out and made the ruling in the case, it said XRP in and of itself is not a security. And then all of that ruling was speaking not only to directly, you know, Ripple and XRP, but it was also speaking out to the rest of the crypto space, informing everybody in the space, this is pretty much where we can start to build our idea of how to shape your business, your approach to your business, using a token in your business, all of this, right? But then Judge Rakoff came out from the Luna case and went the other way. And now that he's done that, and I'm not a lawyer, and I've never played one on TV, I'm going to ask the question, did Judge Rakoff's decision actually gum up the works for the rest of the crypto space because he's saying it's not accurate. But we know that Judge Torres's ruling is speaking, if nothing else, specifically now to XRP alone. Because Judge Rakoff didn't agree, and then it would have continued to speak to the entire crypto space. But it didn't. He disagreed. So now Luna's different, which means everything else may be different, which means you can't guarantee what Judge Torres or you can't superimpose what Judge Torres said over the rest of the industry, as you could have prior to Judge Rakoff's decision. That's just my layman interpretation and understanding of what's going on here. We'll try to get somebody to speak on it. But I tell you, that's what I feel like's really happened here. And just imagine for the next two years, if we don't get legislation and XRP truly is the only digital asset with legal clarity, what will it look like in 24 months from now? Not financial advice for me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you on the next one.